I followed him borrowing money. He asked me to borrow money. I borrowed money in my school. They are still there. The debt of the money I borrowed, I'm still paying it till date. The, the money I borrowed is this pastor that is helping me now to foot those bills. I borrowed money for his sake. His student school fees that have hit like this, I'm, I'm, I'm paying it one by one. Grad, I've not finished paying the debt. Till now, go to Holy Child School, Rumokushi and ask. They are all aware of the story. It didn't end there. Now, after everything, we come to that place. We come to the house where we are living right now. Now, the thing is, feeding is a problem in the house. Ask Bright if he has given me upkeep since 11 years I've married him. Even if it is 5,000 naira upkeep, go and ask him. Go and ask Bright if he has done anything. But well, I don't complain. It's normal. He may not have it. I keep living my life the way I'm living it. I keep surviving the way I'm surviving it. It didn't stop there. This same Bright, after one year, I returned back to him. When he took me to the church, he has met uh, one church he wants to be attending. I should live with him and all that. I left with him. Now, the issue now is, at the end of it all, I came back, we started living outside the family. Brian started from where he stopped. He started the worst. The worst is that I shouldn't go to work. I should be a housewife during the pandemic. I shouldn't go anywhere. He called people. He said these men, that men, men are chasing me, are chasing men. He saw anybody around me. He would nail them. He has no ability. He chased people that call me mother away from me. The youths, the teenagers. He said they are all sleeping with me. That was it. So he told me that the only way for him to give me total support into my music, because I have gone to the studio to do escalator work of my music, he said not in his house. Not in his house. Now, the issue that is that he said, I have affairs outside, that there are many men that are chasing me and all that, that I must take an oath for him. I must take an oath for him. He said, I should take an oath. That's the only way you allow me to have peace in his house. I now begged him, if I take an oath, the record of the oath is with me. I recorded it. I have record of it the day I took the oath. I said, if I take an oath for you, will that make me to be a free woman? I can go. He said, I can go to the moon. He will be sleeping. I should take an oath that there is no man that is going to sleep with me, blah, blah. I said, is it for both of us? He said, no, just him alone. I took that oath for Bright just to prove to him that I am innocent. I took oath against my faith. I took oath against my faith just to prove to him that I don't have any skeleton in my cupboard. And I asked him, do you have peace? And I said, I have peace. But that is the worst he started doing the worst. I'll go to borrow food outside. I'll go and, you know, no, just negligence. Sometimes he will go carry the children and buy them food for them to eat. Me, I will stay hungry. A neighbor will just give me food to eat. I will just be surviving it. I said, enough is enough. I'm not going to die. He looked at me one morning. He said, there is no marriage between us. That I'm just in his house wasting his time. That I'm a smelling thing. He chased me out of our room. That I'm a smelling thing. That smelling thing, he called smelling thing. He thrown in the garbage. He threw me in the garbage thinking I'm going to die. He says, make my life miserable. That when last I hear about his name, I will, I will run away. That's what he told me. And I told him I'm not going to die. That he's going to make my life miserable and all that. Now, the last straw that brings the camel's back is that I refuse taking all these things. He told me vividly that number one, he's going to put acid in my cream. I don't want to bring my children into this because even my children became scared and they were crying. My son will embrace me. My son of four years will embrace me and say, Mommy, don't worry, I will take care of you. He abused me before my children. I don't talk. He called me a weak woman. And you came on social media to tarnish an innocent man's image. You came on social media, Bright. You've done your worst. You want to get fame. You, you bent to your knee that you're going to destroy me. But let me tell you, this is my rising moment. You bent on your knees 
that over your dead body will you see me standing right and fulfilling my destiny? You throw me in the garbage, but the seed you throw in the garbage find a means of growing and becoming something. I decided to leave his house. How? When I left, when I I left his house, one day he just locked me up and said, "I'm not going for church program." That night, he locked the door and put the key in his pocket before my kids. I said, it has gone to the extent that you start locking me and walking away. So anything can happen to me. There's a fire outbreak. I can't escape anywhere. He told me that the children I'm even talking about, it's not when I'm alive to see them. I will start talking about them. When I'm alive, that when I'm dead, I'm rubbish. He move on with his life. Then highest his money. My people don't talk and all that. He locked me up. I packed my things before his eyes. I said, Bright, it is over. Bright, it is over. I'm not going to do this anymore. This is the last straw that will break the camel's back. I can't die in your house. I can't die because I want to prove myself. I want to prove myself that I'm, I'm, I'm a good woman. Before his eyes, I packed my bags. I kept them or whatever. He told me to leave. That I should leave self is done with me. That it's just his children I'm taking care of. I packed my bag and I kept it. The next month, my, that night, I escaped by my children. My daughter went and looked for spare key. And my son, they hid the key and come and give me and say, Mommy, run away. Mommy, escape. That was how I left the house that night. That was how I escaped out of that trap. In the morning, we pack our things. I packed the things, called a taxi, packed the things to my mother's house. That was on the 28th of November last year. Pastor Moses Adeyo was not in the picture. I have nothing with him then. I went to my mother's house. Brett knew that I'm in my mother's house. Even that day as I was going, he saw me. Let's talk. Okay, can we see? I told him, I'm not if you want us to talk, come to my mother's house. As he came to my mother's house, he saw me. I said, this is where we are. And this I want to be. I'm done. I pick up a Bible to renounce the oaths I took. He ran away. Immediately he saw me pick up a Bible. He left the house because he knew I want to renounce the oaths. I lured him one day in a restaurant. I have a record of it. The oath I renounced. I lured him, told my sister to follow me. I didn't tell my sister what I was going to do. Before I quickly bring up the Bible, I renounced the oath. I said, your oath is no longer binding me. I am a free woman. I can live my life. It's not working. Let's not kill ourselves. Go your way. Let me go my way. He said over his dead body. It was not enough. It was not enough. I left. I left to Lagos on the, on the second week of December. The first week of December. That's when I left Lagos. I was struggling. I will have to squat with a friend. Because if I'm in Buttercourt, Bright will, will ping me. Bright will trace me and will block my ways. That is his nature. He will always stop me on the road. I will cry, yo. I will be begging for rescue. I have to leave Buttercourt so that I can have my peace. I went to Lagos. I started my life afresh. I started squatting and squatting. I got a mini job in Lagos. Nobody knew my story. I covered up. I started my life afresh. I started any small, small money to be able to take care of myself. It didn't end there. That was how it happened. It was calling. I said it's over. Now, to make it official, I came from Lagos to Portacourt in April. April. He said I left his ass in seven months and I ran and lived with Pastor Moses Adeyo. I've been in Lagos all this while. I came in April to my village. I went to my people and told them what has been going on. They shouted. I've been going through all this. I refuse telling them. They invited Bright. The king of my community invited Bright and his father. He called his father. His father refused answering him. His father did not respond because they all know the story. Bright came with his friend. They told him to go and bring his father. He didn't bring his father. We had an agreement. We, we went to my, my house. My uncles, my father, the people that gave me anti marriage sat. And they... I held my view. I opened my mouth and told them what has been happening. They all lamented. Even the friend he came with was shocked that he didn't tell him to this extent. Bright, they asked me if it is true. He said, yes, what I said was true. They said, but you never come to tell us that our doctor is not with you. You just seal it up all this while. 
But he said he doesn't know where I am that I ran out of his house without his notice. He has been begging. Now,